Hey there, welcome to the 21st Easy JavaScript tutorial part of easyprogramming.net. In the last tutorial, we looked at the if else statement. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at another conditional statement called the switch statement. The switch statement works uh, very similar to the if else statement in that it looks at some data and a specific piece of code is triggered based on the condition that's met. The switch statement may be easier for some of you in certain cases, so it's extremely useful to know. So let's take a look at the structure. So you start out with the keyword switch. It's a reserved keyword in JavaScript, so once you type it in JS Fiddle, it'll turn purple, telling you that you do something with it. And in parentheses, you input the item that the switch statement should analyze. Normally, it'll be a variable, something that the user inputs, so that uh, it can take that data and do something with it. And in curly braces, you input your conditions. So every condition is prefixed by the keyword case. Uh, with a space, of course, so it's not really a prefix, but it starts with the word case and the condition that needs to be met. Let's say you're looking for items of clothing, so if the user inputs shirt, it'll look for a shirt in one of these four conditions. Once that condition is met, uh, you execute a piece of code. The condition and the piece of code is separated by a colon here, I'm telling you that this uh, piece of code belongs to the case that comes right before it. Uh, once this piece of code is triggered, you'd want to input uh, the keyword called break. Uh, because what break does is it stops the switch statement from moving forward and executing the rest of the code. Uh, in the if else statement, everything is stopped within the curly braces, but it can, as you can see here, the curly braces does not end until down here. So if condition 1 is not met, it'll keep going to condition 2, then condition 3, 4. Uh, I'll explain why I did this this way without uh, putting an execute or a break under condition 3. And if nothing is met, it goes to the default. So the default, uh, comparing it to the if else statement, is the else statement at the very end. So this piece of code will execute if no other cases are met. And it's usually a good idea to have a default statement so that uh, your code does something rather than just analyze something and just do nothing to the user. Uh, it's a fairly straightforward syntax. So let's take a look at an example and do some practice. So uh, in my practice here, I have a, a text box input here where uh, the user, you or me, will input an item. Uh, the items I have in mind are, again, uh, pieces of clothing like shirt, socks, gloves, hat, shoes. Um, they click on submit, so we're going to work with an on-click event handler, and it'll tell the user, you, the cost. I am going to open the console log for no reason but to move this up here so that it's more centered to your screen. Well, anyway, in my code here, uh, at the very end, I have the under the practice section, the text ID, uh, the input uh, text ID item, uh, submit button, which I've assigned to a variable called button, and a price span ID, which is here, which will be overwritten based on whatever the user inputs. So let's start. So again, we are working with an on-click event handler. So if you don't know what this is, please go back and watch my on-click event handler tutorial where I cover this in depth. Uh, we're going to assign the on-click event handler to the button, and we'll do a quick function. Uh, we'll do var item. Uh, so we're getting the item from the document dot get element by ID item dot value. Remember, it's a text box, so we want to get the value from the input. I'm also going to declare a little variable called price. Uh, <clears throat> not going to define it yet. Not until the switch statement. So we'll do start out with the keyword switch. And we're going to analyze whatever the user input in item, right? So you can copy and paste, you can type it in, whatever. And in open and close curly braces, we'll start with our cases. Uh, like I said, every uh, condition and the switch statement starts out with the keyword case and let's say we're looking for shirt and we're going to separate it with a colon. Let's say if the case shirt is met, uh, the price, uh, the variable price will be assigned the value of 10. And of course we want to break. So this is our first search statement. So uh, it analyzes the item. If it's a shirt, it'll assign 10. And we need to do something with that, right? So let's actually do something with it. Uh, document dot, dot get element by ID price. Uh, let's say I'm going to assign the inner text to price here. So uh, once this is analyzed, if it's a shirt, it'll change the inner text of price here to 10. Uh, let me update and run. Let me go down here. Let's say I type in shirt. 
and there you go. It changes the underline to uh, the blank into a 10 because that's what it's meant. But what if I put in gloves? Undefined. Nothing happens. So we want a default statement. So we want to say could not find an item or something. Right? But let's just keep going. Let's practice some of these cases. So we'll do case gloves. Let's enter gloves. We'll do price equals to 5 and break. Let's do one more. Case uh, socks. Let's say price equals to 3 and break. And now we want to tell the, uh, our JavaScript that we need a default case. So if none of these match, we want it to do something. So we'll say default colon again. Uh, price equals to could not be found. I mean, this example really doesn't make any sense, but you know we're just practicing. So let's update and run. Let's do shirt, right? Let's do gloves, and let's do socks. There you go. Let's do pants. Nothing could not be found. I mean, the dollar sign is still there, but you can fix that later on. So pants could not be found. So we did our Swiss statement. We could do all of this in an FL statement, uh, which would be significantly longer, <clears throat> maybe twice the size because of the number of uh, if else statements you need and the different lines you need but you can also do it in a switch statement. Go back to shirt. Now let's take a look at why break is needed. So if I don't enter a break here, let's get rid of this and I input shirt. Let's see what happens. So run shirt. It's a 5. Why is that? It should be a 10, right? Okay, so let me explain this. So once you enter shirt, it assigns the price uh, of 10. Uh, but since there is no break, the switch statement keeps going. Uh, even though the gloves case is not met, the rest of the P, uh, the rest of the code still executes. So it sets the value of price to five until it breaks. So if I get rid of this break as well, whoops, go back. Let me get rid of this break as well run it and I put in shirt and it'll turn into three there you go and that's because it keeps going until it reaches a break so we assigned the value of price three times and the last one will always win so we need to do break here and break here let me run it one more time see if it's fixed and shirt there we go easy right now always make sure you break. So let's look at why I, in my example here, I did case condition three and then case condition four right back to back. And that's again with the break. If I have, let's say, uh, case, what else is there? Like shoelace, right? Shoes. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Price is not going to be three. Um, so let's say if either shoes is met, uh, it'll keep going until and assign a value of 3 to price. If socks is made, it'll assign a value to your price because I don't need to execute a code because it doesn't break. So we're assigning two different cases to a specific piece of code to execute. So let me run it. So if I do shirt, it assigns it to a 10. Uh, if I do socks, it assigns 3. If I do shoes, It'll stay three because uh, the only piece of code that executes after this case is the price equals to three. So I have that. I hope that makes sense. So uh, in the if else uh, statement world, it'll be you know if shoes equals uh, excuse me if item if item equals to shoes or item equals to socks, uh, then the price is three. But you can write all of that, or you can just do case shoes case socks price equals to three. So in certain cases, the switch statement is easier. It's uh, it can save you more time, uh, help you write less code, which is the goal for most programmers. Um, well, anyway, that's all I have for switch statements. I hope this tutorial opened up more programming possibilities for you in JavaScript. Uh, in the next tutorial, we're going to take a look at uh, one last conditional statement, uh, one last type of condition, uh, conditional program that you can do using the ternary operator. Um, well, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments below. Uh, be sure to watch my on-click event handler tutorials as well as my FL statement tutorials as well as the rest of them. And remember to visit easyprogramming.net for more tutorials. Have a good one.